to this service of thanksgiving for the life of Margaret McGill. Uh, you are very, very welcome, um, and uh, I know this is being live streamed as well, um, but for those of you who are here, uh, I know your presence here today will bring so much comfort to the family, so thank you uh, for coming to this service. Um, I want to say at the outset, uh, my heartfelt uh, sympathy to the family, so to Alison and Jennifer and Brian and the whole family circle and friends, we hold you in our love and in our prayers, not just today, but in the days that lie ahead. I want to say a personal word of um, gratitude to the family for inviting me to uh, come back to Glenburn and officiate uh, at this service uh, today. Um, it's lovely to be back with friends in Glenburn. Um, it's, uh, it's been a long time, um, but it is sad under the circumstances, of course. Whilst it has been a long time since I've had a conversation uh, with Margaret, uh, my abiding memory of her was her lovely, warm, <coughs> engaging smile. I don't think I ever remember a time when I didn't see Margaret with a beautiful smile. That's why I will always remember her. And the picture that's on the front of the service sheet just is uh, just absolutely her. Margaret had expressed her uh, wishes for this service, so we're glad to be carrying out uh, her wishes. Um, as she put the service together, and, uh, and that's important. Um, as we know, Margaret had a strong faith in Jesus Christ, her Lord. And so this service is a service of thanksgiving and celebration for her life and for the legacy of love that she has left for her family and for her friends. And so we give thanks to God and we gather together in the presence of God to worship him. And so we sing together our opening hymn uh, that, of course, Margaret has chosen for us. Be still for the presence of the Lord. 
the Holy One is here. The words are also on the screen if you don't have a service sheet. <laughs> Almighty God, we have come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. We have come with sorrow, but also with hope, to express loss, but also to give thanks, to recognise death, but also to celebrate life, to look back at all that has been but also to look forward to all that is yet to be. Lord, we come in faith, for we believe that you are present, that you have promised that in life or in death, you are always with us. Father, draw near to us as we draw near to you. Speak to us through the words of Scripture, and through all we share together in this day, so that believing in the good news of Jesus Christ and trusting in him, we may receive the comfort he promises, the peace that passes all understanding, and the assurance of everlasting life. So we pray that you would accept this worship we offer to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite uh, Ernie, who's uh, Margaret's brother in law, to come forward and read us from Scripture. Uh, 
I was delighted when the family asked me to take part uh, in the service today. Josh and I have known Alistair and Martha for many, many years, and we enjoyed our visit with them at their home. And then when they moved to Ravenscroft, and then finally the nursing home. As a young woman, Margaret realized that life was not a rerun. She realized that life was not a dress rehearsal. She realized that life is a workshop for eternity. And then Margaret made the greatest decision that a person can make. She gave her life to Christ. And throughout that life, Margaret was always very willing to acknowledge her faith and trust in Christ. And throughout her life, she left a great testimony. And as the Bible reminds us, the memory of the just is blessed. Your mother was not only a good woman and a gentle woman, your mother was a godly woman. And she prayed for you all and for all the grandchildren. And now as we turn to the word of God for our comfort and consolation, I'm going to read Margaret's the favourite psalm, the pearl of psalms. <coughs> The twenty third. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And day though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, thy comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies, thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May God bless the word now to all our hearts Amen. for Christ's sake. Amen. And then we hear from the New Testament, from Philippians chapter 4, beginning at verse 4. <coughs> Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your <clears throat> minds in Christ Jesus. And again, we thank and praise God for his word to us. Amen. I'm going to read a tribute, um, and this comes directly from the family. So I want to say thank you to the family um, for uh, the tribute. And please, as you hear these words, hear them as coming from the family directly. Margaret was born on the 14th of December, 1934, to the late Frederick and Emily Campbell. The family home then was at Geoffrey Street off the Crumlin Road. She often spoke of the early days of her life growing up in the Crumlin Road area. 
<coughs> Margaret spoke fondly of her memories of going to Sunday school in the Mustard Seed Mission Hall and attending the Sunday services. Margaret had six siblings, the late Ella, Emma and Freddie, and is survived by Ray, Elizabeth and Victor. The family moved from Jeffrey Street across the city to the outskirts of East Belfast to a newly built housing executive house in the early 1950s. The house was a four bedroomed house and it was a standing joke between the family then that they all thought they had moved into a mansion after living in a two up two down house with an outside toilet. The address was 13 Carney Crescent, Castle Ray. Thereafter, the home was referred to as number 13. <laughs> Margaret was saved at an early age and dedicated the rest of her life serving the Lord. When she was in her late teens, Margaret and her sister Ella would sing around the mission halls of Belfast. Some of these included the Coleman's Mission, Templemore Hall, the Welcome Hall and many more. It was one Sunday evening when Margaret was singing in Pitt Street Methodist Mission that a young man called Alistair McGill first set eyes on her. And the rest is then history. They were married in Craig Presbyterian Church on the 17th of September 1955 and remained faithful to each other till Alistair passed away on the 17th of December 2019. Margaret and Alistair were blessed with three children, Alison, Jennifer and Brian. They purchased their first family home on the 30th of March 1960. The address was initially 25 Lisnashara Road and later the address was changed to 90 Upper Knock Reader Road, Castle Ray. The door of number 90 was always open and the kettle was always on. There were always people calling in from either side of the two families and friends also. There were some stories told and the laughs could be heard at the bottom of the steps. Margaret became a full member of the Methodist Church on the 21st of March 1976 and recorded in a Bible and signed by the minister at that time, the Reverend Paul Kingston. And she became involved in many activities here in Glenburn from Bible study groups, weekly ladies meetings, serving as a class leader, a tea lady at many church events, helping with fundraising events, as well as acting in the church pantomimes. She played ladies badminton in the church, which was more laughter than playing. And in her latter years, she enjoyed going to the weekly knit and natter group. At this group, Margaret had the knack of telling yarns which resulted in the ladies in fits of laughter and dropping their stitches. <coughs> when the children were growing up, they have great memories of all the neighbours and their children, and the fun and games, trips and picnics, and birthday parties and even holidays, together with the Ross family. All the families in the locality were associated with Glenburn and still are today. Margaret was a great confidant and friend to all her neighbours and was highly thought of by them all and until recent still received visits from them while she was in Breffney. The family can recall many happy times in number 90. While the children were young, Margaret stayed at home with them and then as the children grew she had a few different jobs over the years. Her latter job being a cashier in the Halifax Building Society, where many customers formed their own queue to be served by Margaret with her friendly chat and always smiling. Margaret and Alistair were devoted to their three children and always loved to take them on their family holidays. Should it have been just a week in their Grand and McGill's cottage in Malisle or at McCurdy's farmhouse, farmhouse up the North Coast? Family still talk about these trips. Christmas was always a very special time in the family home and involved in the wider family circles and again the church of course played a large part in this time. 
Margaret and Alistair were proud of their three children growing up, and all three were married here in Glenburn. Obviously then the next step was the birth of their grandchildren and the joy that brought uh, that brought watching them grow up and being able to attend some of their weddings and then being blessed with great grandchildren. But like with all of us, Margaret experienced grief in her life. Apart from losing her husband Alistair almost three years ago, she lost her granddaughter Claire on the 23rd of October 1996 when she was just nine years old. And that sadness remained with Margaret from that point. In their later years, as their health declined, Alistair and Margaret moved initially to a fold and then to Breffney Residential Home as a couple. And the staff joked that this could produce the first Breffney baby. <laughs> Breffney then became Margaret's home for five years. Whilst Margaret had dementia and this progressed over the years, she was still happy and smiling in her own way and her face lit up as we all called to visit. Her Christian faith remained with her through her final days when she was still quoting verses of scripture, singing hymns and choruses and praying aloud. I know the family also wished for me to express their gratitude to the following people. Regina and all the staff at Breffney Residential Home for the care they provided for their mum and dad. The Dementia Action Team from Knock Bracken. The District Nursing Team who provided the palliative care to mum. The doctors and the staff of Castlereagh Medical Centre. The staff at Willowfield Funeral Private Funeral Home. The organist for today, Roberta Roddy. And of course, the Church Council and congregation here at Glenburn for their prayers for mum. Thank you for that lovely, beautiful tribute. One of Margaret's wishes was to have the Bible open at Psalm 23 as she rested in the coffin. Psalm 23, as Ernie has already said, was so precious to Margaret as it is to so many of us in our own faith. It is one of the most treasured passages in all of Scripture, and even for those who don't particularly go to church or hold a Christian faith, the words of Psalm 23 are well known. They are very, very familiar words. They are among the most comforting words that we have in the whole of Scripture, often used in times such as a service of thanksgiving. For a few minutes now, I just simply want to offer some thoughts, some reflections on the image that we receive in Psalm 23, particularly in verse 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. It would be wonderful if we could journey throughout this earthly life with a promise that we would never go through difficult circumstances. But all of us experience life in all its fullness, good, bad, or indefinite. And all of us experience difficult, challenging, painful times. Peter wrote, and he said these words, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering although something strange were happening to you. Whether it was in the context of persecution for your Christian faith in the early church, whether it is just all that life throws at us, we know that we're going to expect times 
of difficulty, painful times, times, of course, of loss, of grief. But scripture reminds us that God doesn't say, you go through life and I'll meet you on the other side. God reminds us that even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I am with you. I am with you. God doesn't simply say, you go through life, I'll see you on the other side. God shares life with us. Every aspect of life, the good times, the painful times, God shares all of life with us. And because God's presence goes with us, it means that fear has no hold on us. We do not need to fear evil or death itself, for through Jesus Christ, God has defeated evil, has defeated sin, has defeated death itself. The story of a, a boy who stood in front of the classroom one day to make a speech about what I want to be when I grow up. He said, I'm going to be a lion tamer and uh, have lots of fierce lions and I'll walk into the cage and they will roar. And then he paused for a moment, thinking through what he had just said and then added, but of course I'll have my mommy with me. <laughs> when death roars its worst at us, we need not fear, <laughs> for Jesus, our Saviour, our Lord, is with us. <laughs> whatever our situation, whatever each of us face in life, a promise from God is eternal, that he is always with us. God is frequently described in the Bible as being a shepherd who cares for and tends to his flock of sheep. A shepherd used the rod to ward off evil and to direct the sheep as they walk. The staff with its large crook at the end served to support the sheep's body when it crosses a dangerous chasm. <laughs> The Lord protects, guides, and supports us. He doesn't send us through the dark valley with a mere promise to meet us on the other side. He goes with us every step of our way. God's protection is what brings us that comfort we need. We celebrate Margaret's life. We rejoice in the faith in Jesus that she held. We rejoice in the legacy of love that she has passed on to her family and her friends. But we will miss her. We will miss her. So we give thanks to God for Margaret. But we are comforted by the knowledge that we know she is in God's near presence, receiving the reward that God has for all his children. So my prayer for each of you as a family is that you will, this day and in all the days that lie ahead, you will know the peace of God, which passes all understanding, as you hold Margaret deep in your hearts. Amen. Let us pray together. <coughs> Loving God, we bring you our thanks for Margaret, for the person she has been, and for all she has meant in so many ways. We thank you for her warmth and love, her enthusiasm and zest for life, for her courage and cheerfulness, her many interests and abilities. We thank you for all the happiness 
that Margaret has brought to those around her, especially to her family. Thank you for the special times shared, those moments which will live on in their minds as enduring memories. We thank you for the convictions Margaret has held throughout her life, those things she has believed in and worked for. Thank you for her faith, which has given her such support throughout her life and which offers us the same support this day. So we ask you to reach out to us and to all whose lives have been enriched by Margaret's presence. Praying especially in these moments for her family, for Alison and David, for Jennifer and Alan, for Brian and Jennifer, for her grandchildren, Lindsay and her husband, Paul, for Neil, for Gareth and his wife, Laura, for Stuart, for Jenna and her husband, Eddie, and for Michael, and for her great-grandchildren, Emily, Molly, Adam, Ruby, and Lucy. For her brothers and sister and their spouses, for Ray, for Elizabeth and David, for Victor and Hilary, and for the wider family circle and friends. Grant to each the comfort you have promised to all who mourn, your peace that passes all understanding. <coughs> May the hope of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the experience of your love, and the support of family and friends bring the help that is needed at this time. Give to each the strength to endure sorrow in all of its intensity, looking forward in faith and knowing that in Christ, nothing can finally separate us from you or from those we love. We offer our prayers through Christ, our risen Lord, who taught us when praying together to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. said earlier the family are very grateful for your presence sharing with them uh, today and invite you to share with them at Castlereagh Hills Golf Club um, after this service is concluded. So we sing together our closing hymn after which I invite you to remain standing for the commendation and blessing. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear.
men, Margaret to God. And to your keeping, O merciful God, we commend your servant, Margaret. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the joy of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all and all whom we love this day and evermore. Amen. Amen.